Hello there, Virgos. Welcome to your weekly reading. So um, I have a mess, uh, an image for you that I'm going to use as kind of like the foundation for this reading. Um, I see this little kid and he looks about, I would say 10, 11 years old. He's in a bookstore. And um, you know, those uh, really, really, um, really big bookstores where the, the shelves are like, ceiling high and they're filled with books and there are ladders that you have to climb up in order to retrieve the books from the top shelf near the ceiling and he's a little kid so he's asking the uh, store I guess the, the the store owner and he's pointing up at the shelf all the way on top and he goes can you help me get that book and then the store owner is holding like a bunch of other um, books and the store owner is telling you I have all these books here. These are the books that, you know, are appropriate for kids your age. You should read these books. And you're like, no, I, I want the book on the top shelf. And then he keeps persuading you to read these other books instead because they're age appropriate for you. And so I see it going back and forth. And I feel like, you know, as a 10, 11 year old child, you might not have the vocabulary to be able to express verbally what you want and then i also feel this fear of authority as well you know as children we have a reverence for adults and so you might not want the books that he has to offer but you don't really know how to tell him um you, you don't really know how to say no but you have your eyes fixed on something else so what i'm getting from this is i feel like there's somebody in your life who might be a little bit patronizing towards you um, either they feel like they know what's best for you and they tell you, you know, you should do this, you should do that because I know what's best for you. Or when I was your age, I didn't know any better. So, you know, you should listen to me. And I don't feel like they mean any harm, but their behavior is a little bit condescending and their behavior or whatever they're saying, it's appropriate to, you know, when they were young, the time that they grew up in, but it's definitely not appropriate for you. And then I also feel like there's somebody who's not really appreciative of your skills. So it's almost like, you know, the, the, the kid in the, the bookstore, he's uh, well-versed, he's well-read, and despite being 10 or 11 years old, he is wise, um, older and wiser beyond his years. And so he can, you know, um, digest a very complex book. And so I feel like, you know, no matter which area of your life this is playing out in, I just feel like somebody is almost like threatened or afraid of the leaps and bounds that you're able to take of your own volition. It's like you do things to better yourself. You do things to uh, kind of step outside of your comfort zone. And I feel like this person might inadvertently, through their patronizing behavior, really hold you back, okay? And um, I feel like for some of you, though, this is like um, parents. And I especially feel like, you know, um, mother figures. I, I, I feel like a very strong parent vibe. Somebody that, no matter how old you are, they always see you as this little child. And so they... They, they can't fathom the fact that you're always growing, you're always learning. And if they, for whatever reason, have had difficulties with, you know, educational attainment, if they are more of a worker rather than a, um, an educator, or if they're, you know, some people just are, school is not cut out for them. And so if they have never achieved the level of educational attainment that you have, then they will always see you as somebody who is, you know, uh, childlike. And they might not understand that after all your education, after all the years and the, the, the money that you've invested for your own educational attainment, that you have already, you know, outgrown them, that you know what you're doing. You're not just, you know, this kid in a bookstore. You know what you're doing. You know how to live your life and you know what you need to do to better yourself. And you know, innately, you know what's appropriate for you and you know what you want. So I feel like they're trying to kind of steer you away from that. Um, so 
that's what I'm getting here in terms of the overall energy. And um, it's also echoing a little bit in the cards, okay? So what I feel here, we do have the emperor, which is a, a strong authoritative figure in your life. And it can be male or female. And this is somebody that I feel, you know, they have given you a lot of guidance. They have, uh, they're, they're actually a really good person. They don't have harm. Um, they don't mean harm. They are not trying to hold you back. But there is a sense of rigidity of, about this person. The emperor can be quite cold, can be quite rigid. And this is a person that has given you a lot of advice, a lot of, um, like, a lot of training. And I feel like they're transferring the tools that you need. They're transferring the skills, the expertise, and the tools. And they feel like they um, contributed a lot to your growth and to your progress. So they always look at you with the sense of maternal and paternal pride. But I feel like there comes a point where you kind of outgrow them. I have here the three of wands, waving goodbye to the past wanting to explore other options that are out there, taking what you have learned and applying it to the real world. And I feel like many of you, this is a major, major um, embarking on a major new phase of your life, waiting for your ships to come in, but more so. This is a sense of timing. There's that clock right there and it's telling you, um, I've already you know, learned everything that I need to learn here. If I were to stay here, life is gonna stagnate for me or professionally, I'm gonna stagnate. And I need to move on. So there's this element here about timing that um, I, I feel like, you know, the course of the relationship in this situation, it seems like you have learned a lot from this person and it is time for you to kind of spread your wings and, and kind of soar. But their rigidity might be, in fact, they, they do have a lot of love for you and a lot of support, but their rigidity might, in fact, be holding you back, okay? For some of you, this is a love relationship partner. This is somebody who you love tremendously. Um, they're very reliable. They're very supportive. And I feel like we have here the Ten of Cups, wanting to build a future together and feeling almost like you've met the kindred spirit that you're, you, you've been dreaming of. Um, so you're quite happy with them. But the energy of the emperor is that, you know, they're, they're very stubborn. They're very fixed in their ways. They're um, a little bit hesitant about moving forward and, and making changes. And they're very, very risk adverse. So that means they don't venture into the unknown lightly. And I also see somebody who's very like uh, bogged down with a lot of family issues. Okay. It's not that the it's not that they uh, they have hang-ups when it comes to you know family but I feel like they could be a little bit more on the traditional end they might have a lot of family around them and their decisions are always influenced by family members so there's that element coming through as well and I feel like you know in a way you respect them you respect somebody who's family oriented you respect somebody who can hold his or her own and you respect someone who's strong and you know they they're not a follower or their leader you respect that about this person um, but there are elements here about kind of outgrowing a certain relationship and even though there is a lot of love and and you know a lot of support I just feel like you want more you want something more out there and you feel like there has to be something more so Somebody I feel can inadvertently hold you back and they don't do it out of spite or they don't do it to be manipulative, but they do it because they feel like they know what's best for you or they might not have truly fathom all the changes that you have gone through very recently and that, you know, um, what used to be your interests are no longer interesting to you, that you have changed and you have moved on or you have you know like the emotions are still there you still care about this person but you might have outgrown the relationship okay um i definitely feel there is somebody here that there's like a love offer and i feel like it's another person and there's somebody that feels really really strongly about you i have here the knight of cups this is a, a gesture of love somebody wanting to reach out and um, in a way, they're kind of testing the waters. This is somebody who's very shy, okay? So the Knight of Cups 
is uh, traditionally, um, it's like they take one step forward towards you and they need some type of a confirmation or they need you to egg them on before they take the next step. So every step that they take towards you, they need validation. Okay, they need validation. They, they can't do things of their own volition. They, they need to have like that confirmation, like every step that they take. And over time that can be, you know, especially if you're dealing with an, with an adult, who has time for that, right? And so it can feel a little bit frustrating. And in an extreme sense, it can feel a little bit like, I'm not your mother. I'm, you know, uh, we're, we're like the same age. I'm not your mother. And I feel like this is somebody who's your same age. It's just emotionally, they're a little bit shy and they, they, they need a lot of validation before they can move forward with you. And I also feel like, I also feel like they see you as someone who's quite successful. So they're kind of intimidated, which is understandable because um, I feel like many of you are really trying to make some positive changes in your life and you're very, very career focused, okay? So I feel like this is a big, big, big career year for a lot of Virgos uh, where you are rubbing elbows with a lot of people, where there's opportunities for you to make like really, really um, major strides in your career so like I, I do feel professionally you are in a higher status for some of you and then I also feel like you're networking a lot you're not like one to you know enjoy it but I feel like you do it um, and it, it might just come as a result of your job where you have to do it and so you're rubbing elbows with a lot of really powerful players really powerful players and so the other person feels like yes they want to extend this offer but they don't feel like they're on your same level and that might be why they're so skittish and they need validation and and that might be why um they're not moving towards you i also feel like if this is a partner it's somebody that has had a lot of struggles um, getting their career off the ground okay so they might not have the proper education they might have had a lot of setbacks once again they might have had a lot of family issues interference and they might even lack that family support system and so it disallow them to you know be able to for example and you know I don't I feel like I don't have to say this with you guys because you guys understand but just in case you're cross-watching um, I feel like many of you, you have, you, you guys work really hard. I'm not going to lie. You guys work really hard and let's not take that away from you guys. You guys give 100% to everything that you do. Um, but I feel like you have support of family when it comes to educational attainment. Okay. Somebody might have helped you pay the bill. Somebody might have really helped you, um, like co-sign for like a big student loan for example to help you through school to help you through grad school somebody might have provided you you know like a living stipend but then again you also worked hard you also not only did school you worked outside of school or yeah you worked and went to class so that you can support yourself okay so it, it it's it's like a symbiotic relationship i feel like you know somebody helped you this person on the other hand i feel like they didn't get that support they don't have the support and the financial backing of their families and i feel like everything that they touch there's a lot of trepidation and fear with this person fear of failure fear of not having a safety net and so where you are right now where you're trying to embark on a new life you're you're like um fearless because you've always had that support and it boosted your self-esteem and i feel like you look at new opportunities not so much with fear and trepidation, but you look at new opportunities with with uh, wonder and with the sense of like, it's going to be great. It's going to work out, you know, and whereas this person change is really difficult for them. They're very risk adverse. And when you grow up without, you know, having that support system, I feel like it can make you into a very fearful closed off person because you don't have that confidence and you don't have that backing and you just don't have that sense of 
Um, if I mess up, there's no safety net, right? It can be a really scary place. And I feel like that's where this person might be coming from. So if you're wondering why they won't take a risk, if you're wondering why they take forever to do something, if you're wondering why they're so kind of like aimless and directionless when it comes to their life path and their career goals and the things that they want to do for themselves, it's because of that space of fear, fear of failure. They do want all of these things. And they can sit there and draw you a blueprint as to what they want to achieve. But I feel like there's still that sense of inertia, you know. Um, it takes a long time and it takes a lot of nudging and it takes just... Um, I, I feel like it has to be, you know, a lot of support and the right condition and a lot of timing in order to get this person to move. And I feel like that that's where they're coming from, okay? So if you're dealing with a partner like that, um, be a little bit more sympathetic when you're dealing with them. And I feel like, you know, nudging them, supporting them is going to go a lot further. I feel like there's a gift coming for you guys. Um, like a, a major, I, I see something wrapped up in boxes, okay? And I'm getting it with both of these energies. I have here the Knight of Cups and the Ace of Cups, okay? So this is like a tangible gift, something that is coming in. I feel like it's wrapped up. It's something that, um, it, it looks very artistic or very beautiful, but I feel like it fits in the palm of your hand. So there's somebody giving you a gift of appreciation for some type of achievement or something that you've done. And I feel like it comes in a very unexpected way. I don't see like an award ceremony or anything like that. I believe I saw that with Taurus, but I'm not seeing that here, but I feel like a gift of appreciation that is something very tangible, it's small, it fits in your hands, but I feel like it's going to be very unexpected. So keep an eye out for that. Um, and especially if it's coming from somebody who is a little bit kind of shy and skittish, I feel like that's their way of showing you that they have feelings for you, okay? Um, so here's another thing. Um, I feel like some of you might be in a very stable relationship, but there's somebody outside the relationship that can be posing as a source of temptation. Um, I don't feel like, you know, anybody is really stepping outside of the relationship, but there is another person. So I'm seeing three people. I'm seeing you. And then I'm seeing two other characters right here. And their energies are very different. One person's very driven. The other person's shy, skittish, you know, um, kind of their, their, their life trajectory and their life, their professional uh, achievements kind of meander. And so on paper, this person who's very driven sounds great. Like on paper, they look great. They've achieved a lot. They have high ranking, high status. And they really respect you. They, they have a great deal of admiration and respect for your intelligence and your work ethics. Whereas the other person, you just feel really comfortable with this person. There's no pretenses. There's no need to, you know, put on airs. Uh, the conversation flows really, really smoothly. But this person is a little bit more of a pleaser. And they, they are really afraid of uh, rejection. And they are also, it's like a... Somebody who might be a little bit more of a social chameleon, they morph into the personality that they think you want, or they morph into the the, the crowd, okay, Where this, whereas this person takes charge. So I feel like some of you might be trying to decide between the, the two people. Yes, there is a very strong soul connection here, but I also feel like there's a lot of admiration, there's a lot of growth potential with this other person here. Um, so that's what I'm feeling here. Um, some of you could be dealing with a water sign, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, and then others. I feel a uh, strong fire energy, Sag, um, Sagittarius, Aries, and Leo. And either way, I, I keep getting this energy of, um, I keep getting the energy of, um, if, you're, if you're dating, if you're single, there's this person here. It's coming in strong. If you're dating, you're dating somebody who's very firm, okay? You're dating somebody who's very firm. And I also feel like you're you're trying to build a family, like trying to, you know, take the relationship to the next level, trying to build a family. 
um, your career seems to me to be very, very established. So this reading is mainly about, you know, the emotional, uh, the, that emotional need, wanting one thing. And then the other person's all like, but I want you to have these things. Why do you want that when you can have these? And so it's that energy about not wanting to have to explain yourself, feeling like the other person, if they love me, they should accept the fact that, you know, I don't want this. I want that. And then feeling like I don't need to explain this. This is just what I want. If you, if you care about me, you should respect what I want. You shouldn't, you know, try to impose what you think I want on me. And you definitely should not make decisions for me. So I, I feel like there's a little bit of a blurring in boundaries um, between you and another person that you are in a interpersonal relationship with where they believe they know what's best for you they might speak on your behalf or they might you know make decisions for you and i feel like it's something that has happened many 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 times and so it becomes second nature between you and that person and this is the week where you start to see it and you start to it, it, it might start to annoy you and it might start to make you feel like wait a minute you know, they, they never asked me, why are they making decisions for me? So that's what I'm seeing here. I hope the reading is helpful for you guys. And um, have a happy Thanksgiving for those who are celebrating, okay? And uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. I hope the reading is helpful.